This is the successor to electric motors and batteries, a new kind of fuel cell. But instead of using hydrogen as a fuel, this cell runs on something much more unusual, a shimmering, highly explosive metal, sodium. The combustion of sodium allows for three times the energy density and range of any battery, and the fuel costs less than one euro per kilogram. This revolutionary fuel cell was developed by researchers at MIT. Their goal? To outperform electric mobility by orders of magnitude. And the research data is so extraordinary that the scientists themselves worry they won't be taken seriously. In some applications, their system really is better than any form of electric mobility currently available. Even more surprising are the reported emissions of the fuel cell, described in the research data as almost unbelievable. If the results hold up, the byproduct of sodium combustion in this cell is a white powder most people already have at home. Sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda. So have Professor Chang and his team at MIT invented one of the most spectacular technologies of the 21st century? Or have they just ruined their reputations forever? Professor Chang is fascinated by a problem that many still underestimate. Energy density. 100 kilowatt hours stored in lithium batteries weigh around 680 kilograms. By comparison, 100 kilowatt hours in diesel fuel weigh just 8.5 kilograms. That makes batteries nearly 80 times heavier. While electric motors are more than twice as efficient as combustion engines, this advantage isn't enough to offset the massive weight penalty. In a comprehensive view, diesel is still 40 to 50 times more energy dense. This makes batteries a poor fit wherever weight is critical. And that's especially true in transportation. For cars and trucks, the weight reduces range. That might be tolerable. But on ships, batteries drastically reduce cargo capacity. And in aviation, wide-scale battery use is currently impossible. That's why Professor Chang and his team asked, what if someone invented a true alternative to batteries? Not just hoping for a miracle battery someday, but actually creating a different solution now. Enter the sodium fuel cell. Unlike conventional batteries where materials are fixed inside the cell, this fuel cell consumes critical materials as fuel. But before we dive deeper, an important note. Batteries do have unbeatable advantages in some areas. For example, electric bikes. If you live in a busy city like Frankfurt and want to avoid traffic jams, an e-bike is a fantastic option. Plus, riding an e-mountain bike is just plain fun. The only downside? E-bikes are expensive, but not always. You can now get high-quality refurbished e-bikes at up to 60% off. Companies like Upway test and certify every bike. They provide photos and detailed condition reports, and their online ordering process is simple. You can filter by height, power, and color. You know, bikes arrive ready to ride with just minor setup like aligning the handlebars and screwing in the pedals. Yes, there might be small scratches, but the price to performance ratio makes it a great deal. I've had mine for several months and I'm completely satisfied. If you use my code, you'll even get an additional 100 euros off any bike over 500 euros. Code and link are in the description. Back to sodium fuel cells. Traditionally, fuel cells combine hydrogen and oxygen to produce water, releasing energy stored via electrolysis. Professor Chang had a different idea. What if we used materials from battery chemistry instead of relying on hydrogen? Many don't realize that fuel cells can operate using a variety of substances, not just hydrogen. Any redox reaction that can be spatially separated between anode and cathode is suitable for both batteries and fuel cells. That includes substances already used in battery designs. A great example is the metal air battery. It uses air as an oxidizing agent much like a hydrogen fuel cell. In a metal air battery, metal replaces hydrogen. And that's where Professor Chang and his team introduced sodium in liquid form, heated to around 98 degrees Celsius. Initially, the reaction didn't work as expected. The conversion of the reaction equation was straightforward, but in practice, the cell's performance fell far short. The reaction with dry air was simply too weak. But anyone familiar with sodium knows how violently it reacts with water. When sodium meets water, it creates an explosive reaction. The research team leveraged this. By introducing humid air into the system instead of dry air, the reaction dynamics changed dramatically. Instead of forming sodium oxide, the cell began producing sodium hydroxide, which includes an additional hydrogen atom. And this substance, sodium hydroxide, naturally binds with carbon dioxide, CO2, from the air. The final product, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda. So if you powered a car or plane using this sodium fuel cell and an electric motor, your only exhaust would be baking soda. Of course, releasing it into nature wouldn't be ideal. It's not harmful per se, but in large quantities, it could alter the pH balance of water systems. But there's a better plan, a closed loop system. Chang's team envisions fuel cartridges. You drive or fly producing baking soda, then you swap out the cartridge at a refueling station, 
which uses electricity to convert the baking soda back into sodium. A perfect cycle like a rechargeable battery, but with three times the energy density. The system achieves more than 1,000 watt-hours per kilogram. That's enough to truly electrify aircraft. So, yes, the system works, it's practical, and it completely outperforms conventional batteries in high-weight, high-range scenarios like aviation. The big question now is infrastructure. Can this system be economically integrated into today's logistics and transport networks? For existing air fleets, e-fuels may be more practical. E-fuels allow continued use of combustion engines and existing refueling infrastructure. Airports and aircraft can operate as is. Still, this sodium-based technology proves something critical. Our understanding of energy storage is far from complete. Some concepts sound absurd, like sodium turning into baking soda, but they work. A sodium baking soda fuel cell is the perfect example. And it gets more interesting. A German startup is now using baking soda to store hydrogen with surprisingly high performance. So yes, baking soda may well become one of the most promising chemical energy carriers of the future. If you want to learn more, click the video on screen now and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss what comes next.